Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Gina and we do house plants and house planty things here. So in today's video, we're doing another house plant tour. This is, what is this now? Part three, I think, part three. And that is going to be my kitchen area. There's kitchen over here, there's seating area, breakfast area over here, and then also, and there's lots of plants in this room here. And then also this direction here is my family room. We're gonna be in there looking at lots of different plants. And yeah, so part three is kitchen, family room, and if there's time, my bedroom. All right, so before we get started, I do wanna give you a little general overview of what this space looks like. It's not a huge space. My house is not a huge house, um, but so we have family room here, kitchen here, and we'll just kind of pan around a little bit so you can see what the space is looking like. So this is kitchen and kitchen. Most of my plants, there's some plants over here. Most of the plants are in the breakfast area of my house. And then we're gonna pan this direction. And this is my family room area. I think I need to see if I can go a little bit further. We'll go about right there. Actually, let's go a little bit this way, a little bit more there. All right, so family room space. I have a fireplace right here and I have plants on the mantel here. Coffee table, which you can't see because that this is in the way right here. Um, but lots of plants, shelves with plants and um, yeah, Lots of plants to look at. So let's get started. All right, so right here at my breakfast table, and there is a really noisy blue jay out there right now. Um, but that's okay, we love the birds. Um, so right here on the table sits this Syngonium. This is Syngonium Maria. And she is a pretty dark foliage plant dark green but with like maroonish colors in it tons of new leaves getting ready to open that's syngonium maria all right so we're going up now we're going to go to the hanging plants and this is another syngonium now most of my syngoniums hang out in my office and in my bedroom and, but I do have a couple like stragglers in different places and this Syngonium Maria and this one, this is just the common white butterfly Syngonium and it is ginormous. I mean, I know you can't even, well, you can see how big it is. I mean, comparing me to this, it's pretty big. And it's so easy care, such an easy, amazing plant. I water it once a week and um, it's very chill. It loves, it gets some breeze from this door here when I have the door open with the screen door closed and it loves it. Wonderful plant. Highly recommend it. That's Syngonium White Butterfly. All right, so right next to the Syngonium White Butterfly is Easily the messiest Hoya in my collection. This is Hoya Shepherdii. And the reason it is so messy is because it is constantly blooming. It's like always in bloom. And honestly, I think, no, here's, well, it's dried up, but there was a, this one just got done blooming. And I think this is the first time in months that there is not a, a peduncle currently in bloom. There's peduncles all throughout this plant. And I love this plant. It is, it has been a favorite of mine for many, many months um, since I got this one. I've probably had this plant for a year and 
I just love the shape of the leaves. Looks like string beans. And it's just so cool. That's Hoya shepherdii. All right, so we just looked at the messiest plant in my collection, Hoya shepherdii. Next to that one is what I would say is easily the most beautiful plant in my collection. This is the pothos, the manjula pothos, and it is breathtaking. I'm going to pan you guys down so you can see just how, just how beautiful this plant is. It is, has grown to the floor again. Once again, it is all the way down to the floor. These are the bottom, this is the bottom stem. Touches the floor, it just, just almost touches the floor. It like skims the floor and it's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing plant. Um, my favorite pothos in my collection and Move you back up. It's just, it's just beautiful. I have no other words to describe this. Um, all of these plants here that we're looking at here, they're all plants that get watered once a week. They're all super duper easy care. And they're all amazing. But this one's the most amazing. That's Manjula pothos. All right, so moving along, next we have the Hoya Carnosa Compacta, and this is exciting, you guys. Let me show you what we have going on here. Look what we have going on here. This is, um, I think this is the first year that this plant, it is, this is the first year that this plant has bloomed for me, and there was a pedun peduncle also here that um, I'm pretty sure that one the the blue yeah there's blooms on the ground so that one is done blooming and then here was another one that is all dried up but that one bloomed for me so originally this stem here was the only one blooming so now I've got blooms coming out of this stem also and then I think I saw some back here maybe Maybe not. Maybe it was just this one. But I knew there were two. I finally had like multiple stems blooming. So this is just, I love this plant. It's just so cool. I love the blooms. And for Finster, it doesn't really have a smell. You may have this plant so you know what it smells like. It's a common plant, but there's, it's, no distinguishable scent. It's definitely not florally. Um, yeah, so you always ask. So if you're here and you're watching this, I just thought I'd let you know. So I've had this plant for um, about two years and it was a slow grower. They're known to be slow growers. And just one day it just decided to take off and here we are with blooms all the way way down here way down low way down there so once it takes off once it decides it's comfortable in your space um yeah watch out it's gonna it's gonna really start growing for you so that's hoya carnosa compacta all right so moving back over here back at the beginning um I wanted to show you, now this is a uh, Hawaiian pothos, Hawaiian pothos, which is basically like a golden pothos, but when they have the larger leaves, they're referred to as Hawaiian pothos. Um, but that's this one here. And if you remember, uh, I did a video on this plant where I wanted to repot it and I did, and this plant really did not like the repotting. Um, it, I had a lot of dieback, but look at it. It's still nice and full here. And this one climbs up this window. Like it goes all the way up. You can't, I mean, it's hidden behind the Syngonium white butterfly, but it, 
goes all the way across this curtain frame here and and then it comes down and if, when we were looking at the um, Carnosa compacta you probably saw it hanging below it I'm gonna take you over there and show you I'll just give you a closer look of what it looks like all right so here it is behind the syngonium and then it goes all the way up look at these gorgeous leaves the variegation on those leaves is just so impressive to me I think oh uh, let's sorry I'm probably gonna make you dizzy let's walk over here and you can see the rest of the plant that vine comes down here all the way down here all the way there there's where it ends so what do I do probably should chop it but I don't know I kind of like just letting them go seeing what they're gonna do I love the way it looks all across that window like that I think it's really cool so that's the pothos Hawaiian pothos all right so underneath all these hanging plants down here I have some plant shelving I have this plant stand here this is an Ikea shelf which I love and then this one over here which is also an Ikea shelf and there's several plants on there for us to take a look at so I am going to bring them to you all right so the first one we're going to take a look at is the Hoya Callistophylla did you hear that we have a visitor <laughs> hang on okay so that was just Mr. UPS man and it wasn't even for me it was for my husband so let's continue so here we have Hoya callistophylla a beautiful plant this one used to live in my dining room and I've been kind of moving things around recently and now it's living in here and it seems to be doing super well in here as well very laid back plant it doesn't give me any troubles at all um, next up we have the Hoya Hanie yellow and most of the growth is on the back side got a little bit burnt in the window because it does get some direct sun in that window but look at here we have a it's gonna be blooming it's not currently blooming so I can't tell you what it smells like but this is a beautiful beautiful plant love that texture love the shape of these leaves and very easygoing plant and it's nice I like it and then there's one other plant that lives on this plant stand and it is just a simple hooked up to another plant just a Cebu blue propagation pothos is that epipremnum Cebu blue epipremnum panatum Cebu blue I believe is its official name but yeah it's just a cute little propagation a little leggy a little bit leggy but cute nonetheless so that is what hangs out on this plant stand all right I thought I would just say real quick if you hear like it almost sounds like gunfire it's actually our neighbor two houses down is getting a new roof you can hear it pop 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 that's their nail gun we just had our roof done yesterday and I'm so glad that's not us getting it done it is so noisy and yeah it was it was pretty loud in here yesterday but lots of people are getting new roofs because of all the hail damage we had from the spring and it's their turn so anyway I'm happy to have a new roof it looks so good um, okay next we're going to the next plant shelf here and this next plant is my Hoya Curtisii very pretty and very long it's a very long trailing um, this plant can be a little bit tricky um, 
I don't know. I mean, like here we have some yellowing leaves here, which, yeah, fell off. Um, this one loses some leaves. You can see where it has lost several leaves at one time. I think it's okay now. It's got a lot of new growth here at the bottom. But I don't know. This one is a little bit, it doesn't die on me, but it just, it, it could look better. It could definitely look better. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm still learning with this plant. But it just chills here. I think it likes it there. This next one, this is a Discidia, Discidia ovata. And you don't know this, but like right next to you guys, look who's right here next to you guys. Look, he's in his cat tree. That's Nikki. Hey. He's just, he just, he was sleeping in there and he just stood up and so I thought I would just show you guys real quick. Anyways, this is Discidia ovata, a very cute plant. And it does really well in this window as well. And then this is a new resident of this location here. This is the Aglionema, and I can't remember, maybe Pink Valentine is what this one is called, I think. But it's just been moved here recently. It was living in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, and I didn't want it in there anymore, so I moved it over here. So pretty. Love this plant. So that's Aglionema Pink Valentine. And then next to that one, we just have a, a glass filled with some Snow Queen Pothos cuttings, which are more than ready to be potted up. Aren't they pretty? Very, let me put a little bit more water in here for these guys. They are very thirsty plants. And that one's trying to escape. Put a little bit of wa more water in there. So I guess I'll probably make another, just make a new pot. I thought maybe I could pot this up with the other one, the mother plant, but yeah, it's not gonna fit. I'd have to totally repot the whole thing to put them together. But that's the Snow Queen Pothos. And then finally, squeeze back here we have one last plant and this is the epipremnum pinnatum elbow so i believe this is very similar to the Cebu blue leaf shape wise but it has these variegated leaves and I've also, I've cut this one, or this one needs cutting again. I've made another plant of this, which is living in my grow tent right now. That's a pretty leaf right there. Um, yeah, very easy care. All of these plants, every single one of them, they get watered once a week. And that's it. So now we're going to go over to these shelves. All right, so our next stop, these shelves. Um, so we have, let's see, we have two different types of string of hearts here. I can't bring this one to you because it is, a, if you remember, I think this, this is the string of hearts Silver Glory, and this one was in my video where I told you there were some plants in my collection that I wish were doing better. I'm pretty sure this was one of those. And um, I did end up chopping it, and it's already growing new leaves down here. There's already new leaf growth coming out. And one of the things, the solutions I came up with to try and help this one, because it was very bald here up at the top. So I took some of those cuttings and I put them in at the top here. And I said I was gonna put in a light for this. And that's what I did. And that's why I can't bring it to you, to the camera. Um, but because it's plugged in, of course, 
But yeah, it's doing really well. And this, which I can move, is the another string of hearts. This is the variegated string of hearts. And it has benefited from that lights as well because it cascades down onto it over there. And I have this entirely, since I put that light in there, I have this entirely new, beautiful, gorgeous strand of the string of hearts variegated. And there's more growing down there. So these are doing really well here. They're very happy here. So next to those, this is, it has a really long name. I think it starts with an X, but I think it's also called a maybe silver coin. Isn't that cool? Love the shape of this plant. It's very cute. Very nice. I have another one of these also, a propagation of this plant, which is about the same size as this now. This is the mother plant. And then down here, which you didn't, I don't think you could see where it was, but it's on the second shelf down here. This is a Discidia russifolia variegata. It's the, also known as the million hearts, the variegated version very beautiful plant. This is also a propagation of their mother plant, which lives in my living room. And they're both big, beautiful plants. Love these. Just, I love, 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 love these. Love the trailing. I love the, the shape of the leaves, the colors. It's just, it's an awesome plant. Highly recommend this plant. And that is it on the shelf. All right, so I just thought I would take you in just for a closer look so you can see what these guys look like on their shelf. And there's the Discidia. So also to the left of them is another plant kind of hidden, just kind of hidden back here behind this jungle. And this is uh, aloe vera. And I love this plant. I say that a lot, don't I? I just love, I just love my plants. So we have this really large aloe vera plant. Comes in handy when I burn myself in the kitchen. And then there's also this other smaller aloe vera plant. They are not the same type. This one was gifted to me. It was a extra, a freebie that a seller from Etsy stuck in one of the packages, one of the, my succulent purchases or cacti purchases. Um, they just, they gave that as a freebie. I, I thought that was pretty nice. So I stuck them together and they've been doing great together. They've been together for like a year and love that plant. That's aloe vera. All right, so hanging on the wall here, I have two very lovely plants. This is a uh, Cebu Blue and a Mikan's, and I am going to bring those to you so you can see they're just hanging on this macrame wall hanging that I made when I was into making macrame. So this is the Mikan's, philodendron Mikan's. Isn't it gorgeous? Just so pretty and very long, and I propagate this one a lot quite a bit. It's a very impressive plant. Just, it's really pretty. And I was worried that maybe it wouldn't get enough light where it is on the wall. It's kind of, it's not that close to this window. It's probably like six, seven feet away from that window. And both of these plants do amazingly there. So, you know, one thing is like when you're trying to figure out lighting for your plants, it can be, it can be difficult. Like you're not sure, for me it is. It's like, you know, they have like high light, they have um, bright and direct light, they have medium light, there's low light. I have no idea what this would be considered. Now I have red, like you can tell how much lighting it's getting by the shadow. See how there's a shadow of my hand behind my hand? 
there's a way of determining like the brightness of your light by how much shadow you're getting. So there is, you know, they are getting their shadow here. I actually have my blinds closed a little bit because the sun was out earlier and it was just too bright. So I kind of closed the blinds a little bit. So it would be even brighter in this room. Um, so whatever this lighting is considered, this is doing fine with it. This is like growing like crazy. It's beautiful. The leaves are beautiful and velvety. Look at that leaf. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous plant. So that's the philodendron micans. And then this is the sable blue here. I might not take this one off. I might not bring it to you because we did look at a sable blue earlier. Um, but maybe I should take it off so it doesn't feel left out. Like it's not as important or something. So we'll just take it out of here and bring it to you so you can see. A beautiful sable blue. Cute. I just love these two together. I love the way they look together. They are buddies. They've been together for a very long time, hanging in that macrame wall hanging. They've been in different rooms. They've been in different houses together in that hanger. Um, yeah, they just are always gonna be together. So, all right, behind me here, I have two plants. Let's move here so you can see. On these shelves, there are two plants. So this first one, this is a succulent, and I still have not identified what the succulent is called. I love this pot it lives in. It's a vintage pot. I love vintage pottery, and I think they're, it's just really cute. They look really good together. Of course, it's lost some leaves over the years, but it still has growth. It's got new growth. So I have that one. Just love the way it looks there. And then this one is a new one. If you watch my videos often, you recognize this one I picked up at an estate sale. And I picked it up because I really love this pot. Thought this pot was really pretty. But I love the plant too. This is a spider plant. And um, it's not variegated. I thought maybe it might be variegated, but it's not variegated. Um, but yeah, it's growing. It's growing. It's grown since I picked it up at the estate sale, and it just lives up here on the shelf. I think it, the pot like matches everything perfectly up here. And yeah. All right. Is that everything? That, that is everything in my kitchen dining area. All right. So the next room we're looking at, this is my family room, and there are plants throughout this room. Mostly we have plants hanging in the window and there's plants on these wall shelves here and then over here on the coffee table and on the fireplace mantle. So I think we're gonna go ahead and just start right here, take a look at all of these plants here. All right, so the first one we're looking at, this is the Hoya Australis, and this is just the plain old, not variegated, just a plain, but beautiful Hoya Australis. And I can bring this closer to you guys. This is a really big plant, pretty big plant. And I recently chopped this one, and we've got a new growth point coming up since I did that. This one was living in my office, and it was just outgrowing the space. So I had to find a new spot for it, and I think this is gonna work well for it here. Once again, it's like not super close to the window, but I think it gets enough light. I think it's plenty of light. And I mean, it's getting new growth, so it must, it must be happy here. And this is my only large plant in pond. This is the only, so, and it does great in this, so. I mean, I could easily transfer larger plants to pond. 
I just, I just haven't done it. Now this one was in soil and it had root rot or dry rot. So I had to, I um, rerooted it. And that's why it was so easy to put it just right in the pond after rerooting it in water. And yeah, so it's going to forever stay in pond. This is my little large plant, large Hoya experiment with pond plant. That's Hoya australis. Those beautiful, shiny, deep green leaves. It's just beautiful. And it just sits here on this little, it's actually like a little cake stand it sits on and I think it looks really pretty here. All right, so right next to that one, this is a variegated Monstera adansonii, I believe. And I think it's an Aria, but I could be wrong. Um, this came to me, this was an import plant that um, you might have saw the unboxing of this one. Look how beautiful that is. So it is, it's doing amazingly. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. And I told you guys I was gonna be putting it here and I wasn't sure if this was gonna be enough light for it. So far, so good. It seems like it's gonna be fine. I mean, this leaf that came out is quite variegated. I was worried that if it wasn't bright enough, it was going to lose the variegation, but so far, so good. You know, maybe it's too soon to, to tell since it's only been here maybe like a month, I think, like a month. Um, so yeah, gorgeous plant, gorgeous import plant. And then right next to that one is my other Monstera adansonii. And this one is, I believe, the wide leaf form. And I love how it trails. It's just coming up here. And then it trails down here. Now I'm not as crazy about, I don't know if you can see how tiny these leaves are. See how tiny that leaf is? So because it's trailing, I suppose, that's why the leaves are too, so small or could it be because of, it's not bright enough? I'm not sure. I mean, I think these are coming out fairly big. So I'm thinking, this is just small leaves like this because it's just trailing down here. So I don't know, but I love the way it looks here and I really don't want to move it. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it, see how things are going with it. And yeah, so that's Monstera adansonii wide form, I believe. So next is a most beautiful plant. This is the Pilea peperomioides and isn't it gorgeous? I'm gonna to have to bring it in closer to you guys, but just wanted you to see like how big it is and just so beautiful. I just love this plant. I originally purchased this plant to, as a project plant because I wanted to make some kokodamas and I was going to, I was going to turn this plant into a kokodama, but it just, it got, oh, it's starting to rain. We've been getting a lot of rain. I know I told you guys this. And those roofers, they're, they're out there in the rain. I bet it feels good to them actually, because it's, I think roofing is a hot job. But anyways, um, I was gonna turn this into a kokodama. And now of course it's just too big. Well, I mean, you could still turn it into a kokodama, but um, I don't want a giant kokodama. I just wanted a little one. So I could still like take some of the pups from this to do the kokodama but I don't want to, I changed my mind. I'm just enjoying this. I love the sound of rain. I'm just enjoying this large, lush, beautiful plant as it is. See this rain? See the roofers up there? You can see one of the roofers. Maybe, right, he's right there. Poor guy. Although, like I said, he's probably enjoying that rain. I love the rain. It's just so soothing. So this Pilea peperomioides, let me just 
Bring it a little closer to you guys so you can see those leaves up close. Such a beautiful plant. And this plant can actually be a little bit challenging for some people. Um, I luckily have always had a lot of luck with this plant. It hasn't really been a challenging plant for me. I do keep it in a aeroid mix, a real chunky aeroid mix, which it seems to like. And then also it is kept in a, I don't know if you can tell, but it's in a plastic nursery pot sitting in this head planter. And I water it once a week and it's fairly close to this window here. And it just, it does really well. Um, did I say it's fertilized every other week? And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, Pilea peperomioides. All right, so over here we have two plants. This is a Syngonium and this is a Golden Pothos. And I will just bring them to you. This was a propagation. You'll see the mother plant in my bedroom. Actually, you know what, I've decided because this video is pretty long, I'm gonna save the bedroom for another part. Um, but yeah, you will eventually see the mother plant that lives in my bedroom. It's ginormous and not a ton of variegation on this one, this golden pothos, because it doesn't get a lot of light. I don't think it gets enough light over here for it to have a ton of variegation on it, but that's okay. The green is pretty also. And then this is a Syngonium. This is the pink spot illusion. Not a ton of like pink spotting on it. It's just kind of like, I think it's kind of losing it maybe. Um, and you can see here, it's got some spots, but still a pretty plant that I'm happy to have in my collection. And that one lives over here, which it was in my bedroom. And I moved it over here because I needed the space. And I really like it there. I like, it fills in that space nicely. So, Golden Pothos, Syngonium, Pink Splash, did I say Pink Splash? I might've said Pink Spot before. It's pink Splash Illusion. All right, so we are to all of these hanging plants now. One, two, three, four, five. Five hanging plants in this window, and I'm gonna take you in for a closer look at each one of those. So the first one here, and this is the Pothos Marble Queen. Very cute. She actually hasn't been like, I mean, she's beautiful, a beautiful plant, but not as full. I have been trimming her, but also I think she needs another, a new, she needs repotted again. I think that would make a big difference for this plant to repot it. Um, but I mean, it's still a beautiful plant. I love the planter it's in and there you can see it could stand to be trimmed. That's the Marble Queen Pothos. So next to that one, and it's hard to see, of course, but this is Hoya Chelsea. I love those leaves. Um, oh, Nora's talking to us. Let's, you guys wanna see Nora? There she is, hanging out over here. All right. Distracted. Okay, back to Hoya Chelsea. Just a beautiful, I love like the cup shape of the leaves. And it's a pretty plant. It's been growing quite a bit. This can be a slow grower, but once I stuck it in this window, this uh, southeast facing window, it just took off. Next to that one. Uh, Hoya carnosa compacta. This is the variegated version. Look at this beautiful pink. And that one is going to bloom. So that's exciting. Looking forward to seeing that. And this one is quite long, but I, oh, here's another one. 
I didn't even know that was there. Look at that. So this one is, this is a very long stem. It comes all the way. Okay, so it's here. Some new leaves there. It's here, it goes up, up here, and it's the same stem up here is blooming. And then it comes down here and comes across. So I had draped this because it was like touching the couch. I had to drape it up here, or it was almost touching the couch. So I draped it over the pot. But it is such a beautiful plant, and I really love this pink, and I'm super excited about that it's going to be blooming. It's so exciting. Can't wait to see that. I wonder if it'll be similar to um, the regular Carnosa Compacta. It doesn't want to focus. Or if it will be different. I don't know. We'll see. I will report back to you guys. All right, so next to that one, we have this. This is a Peperomia, and I can't remember the name of this Peperomia. Oh, Nikki is here now. They love sitting in this window and looking at the birds. So this is a type of Peperomia, I believe, pretty positive. And of course the name will be on the screen, but I love it in this pot and I love it. I'm gonna step down here a second. In this hanger, isn't that hanger so cool? So if you watched my one video where I showed you um, the my vintage green dress and I had the the vintage belt from the 80s. Well, this hanger came from the same estate sale as that belt. Isn't it just so cool? I snatched this one up, loved it. It's made of wood and it's just so cool looking and I like the way it looks with this face planter and that plant. So let me just get a close up so you can see what those leaves look like. Very cute. So next to that one, let's turn it back this way. Next to that one is another Peperomia, and I think, once again, I can't remember the name of this one. Maybe Beetle, possibly. But a very cute one. Very pretty, love how they trail. I just love how they just love them, love them together. And I like the combination with this beaded plant hanger. And it's just so cute. All right, you guys, we are almost done. The last thing we have to look at is this shelf filled with plants. And we have this neon pothos in a kokodama that I made. Very long, I have it draped over that curtain rod and it comes all the way down here, all the way down there. Love the way that looks up there in that rainbow pot. And next to that one, Got to be careful, all these pillows. This is a um, spider plant, variegated spider plant. Very cute. I think the variegated version of the spider plant is my favorite. It's just super cute. And finally, this is the last plant. And isn't it a beauty? I love this plant. This is a philodendron silver stripe. What's the name? I can't think of the full name of it. Philodendron, is it Brantianum Silver Stripe? Or maybe it's just Silver Stripe, just a Philodendron Silver Stripe. Not Brantianum, what am I thinking? I was thinking of the, um, the other one. Um, does it maybe start with a B? I don't know, whatever. 
This is philodendron silver stripe. I am almost positive, but isn't it gorgeous? Look at that. It's like a piece. It's like a artwork, like art. Just each leaf. Let's take this down. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous plant. You will be seeing this one in the favorites at some point. Maybe I'll let it, let it get a little bit bigger, but I don't know. It's just, it's a favorite, so gorgeous plant. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the plants in my kitchen space and in my family room space. If you did enjoy that, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I do make videos, new videos every week, twice a week. And I'd love to have you as part of this community. So I hope you guys have a fabulous week and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.